This is my very first time traveling here. Sure, I have books and seen pictures and watched videos online, but there is nothing that will prepare me for what I'm about to experience. There is so much leading up to this trip. Years of thoughts and emotions. Almost every night leading up to this trip, I dream about flying here. Welcome to the beautiful country of Morocco. Join myself, Jacob Taylor, a Moroccan-American traveling with my mother from the United States. We are accompanied by my father over the course of the next couple weeks. We will dive into the various local cuisines. We will venture around Atlas Studios, where Game of Thrones and Gladiator were filmed. We will be riding the fastest train in Africa, and so much more. Situated in northwestern Africa, Morocco is home to diverse geography and climates. Once we land in the city of Casablanca and a relatively short drive to the capital of Rabat, we will take numerous treks to the Atlas Mountains in the east, explore various beaches along the way, and tackle the Rift Mountains in the north. Our trip is centered around the capital city of Rabat, and is where my father and many relatives live. Now everyone knows travel days do not count, so our first day does not start until we land. Not to go into too much detail, but yesterday has been the most stressful day of flying mom and I have ever had. Let me just say, we almost got stuck in JFK, and a trip of a lifetime almost did not happen. As if that wasn't enough stress already, as much as I am looking forward to meeting my relatives and traveling, I can't really back out now, can I? My mind is racing at a thousand miles an hour. We are locked in for 13 days. After a couple deep breaths and a two hour nap at Dad's house, it is time to go meet with our family on the outskirts of Rabat.
For lunch, we have a bed of couscous covered with vegetables like carrots, potatoes, zucchini, and squash. And this one is topped with lamb. This dish also has those preserved lemons that really helps elevate those complex flavors. We are at my aunt's Fatiha's farm, where they obviously grow plenty of fruits and vegetables, but they also have beautiful horses, as one of them pictured here. Our late lunch does come to an end, and so begins the drive back to the suburbs of Rabat, specifically the city of Saleh. What's an end to the first day? Here we go. Alright, so this is my first time, it's like really early, but this is my first time at uh, an international McDonald's. Uh, it's a Moroccan McDonald's. This looks nice. Like, this looks nicer than our McDonald's. This, look ni this looks nicer than our McDonald's. <laughs> what does this say? So right now we're actually um, to Morocco, at least at this station. I, I guess it, all Mor it, it applies for so all, everywhere in Morocco. Seven. But in Morocco, um, we're pumping our own um, they pump the gas for us, so you don't pump the gas. It's like, and it's kind of like they used, I think they used to do it in America, like in the 80s, right? Or the 70s? Then you could pay someone to pump gas for you? Yeah. Nowadays it's all self service. So it leaves at 7 50 and gets here at 9. Yeah, so we have a, a nice 30, flight. 5. Yeah. And then. Casablanca to... Get that thing out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At this point, you are probably wondering where we are flying to. The place in question is the town of Warzazet. We are actually driving southwest to the airport in Casablanca to make the flight departing for the desert town.
سيداتي وسادتي لقد اخذنا في النزول صوب مطار الورزازات ارجو منكم تعودوا بقيدكم وتجدوا احتماتكم وانتقوا مطولاتكم ومتكاء كرسيكم شكرا بدر زمسون After a day of driving and flying, we arrive at our own little desert fortress for the next couple of nights. I mean, it's not even the hot air, it's just... I see the birds. I didn't bring swimming trunks, I forgot them, so. Well, the birds drinking out of the pool. After getting settled in, it is time for lunch at the hotel. There's certain spice that I smell that I'm used to. Yeah, from the land. Because you because it falls in mm. the rain. When the rain comes down... It smells like that certain smell rice. The, the it smells like dirty rice. It smells like dirty rice. No, no, that's earth smell. Mm. That's a good smell. Yeah, from earth. I wish I could take home this one because this one, this one looks, this one looks real nice. This one? Or no, not. Oh, well, I the love these. One, the crystal, this. Well, this one right here. Oh my gosh. Mm. That it's one is too heavy. No. Too heavy. No. <laughs> too heavy. Too bad I didn't live in Morocco. I could just take whatever. Yeah. So there's that one. I really love. That's, oh, my. Oh, that one looks so good. Oh, Tajin, man. Wow. Oh, got the little the After bargaining some items for us and friends, it is time to go find dinner. How do you say that in the orange? Academia. Academia. This is a, 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 a school. Language. <laughs> After walking around the town for a little bit, we have found a restaurant that suits us for dinner, named Afulki. Here we go, we have a uh, steak sandwich, and then we have fries and uh, sauce. 
That looks real good, but she has uh, the... That looks good. So, uh, we just got done with uh, dinner. Yeah. It was good. It was. It was. It was really good. Yeah. You wanna go yeah. Go this way. Side? Yeah, this side. No, okay. The sun rises on a special day three as we are to go tour the Atlas Studios. <laughs> Shukran. This is gladiator. That is your crop for gladiator. We see the prison window. He kind of, um, Russell Crowe kind of reminds me of Gerard Butler. Kind of looks like Gerard Butler. This is like inside of the pyramid. Oh. In the pyramid, we have a prison. Yeah. This is like prison. Oh, yeah. Wow. We don't have a light to, to see. But, yeah. But it's a prison for the, the mummy. Yeah. Come on, see. Wow. Yeah, it's like a stone, but it's not stone. All made plastic. Yeah, plastic. Real one in Egypt. Yeah. It's made with a bigger stone. Yeah. It's more big than this one. But here uh, we can uh, change the decoration. Yeah. And uh, this is what's good about the paper. About 150 people who are going to be sent in six months. And all we need to Well, it looks like there's a new director in town. Unfortunately, my time as ruler has made me quite hungry, so I forfeited my position so we could go have lunch at the Fool Sun restaurant. Shukran. Shukran. Uh, schooler, yeah. English. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's okay. currently um, storming outside, so mm. we walked out. It was like sunny, like hot, dry. Maybe we would get wet. sun went down and we're back at the Alfuki restaurant and we're going to have a dinner uh, for a second night here in Where's the Set before we go to Marrakesh. So this is like some sort of hors d'oeuvre or appetizer? This is my salad. This is my Oh, salad. that's her salad. Okay. <laughs> I thought this was like an hors d'oeuvre. So this is Mong's salad. I thought, I thought this was very much better. Oh, this is, looks amazing. So, like a Sunday. This is, this is my pasta. The first dish was too spicy for me, so I just went um, with that Alfredo. Uh, yeah. Yep, it is back to the road for us. But not back to our bot, as some of you may think. We are heading back into the same desert mountains, pretty much undoing all of the progress that we just made. Just to recap the day so far, we went through customs even though our flight did not leave the country. 
We spent what felt like a two-hour flight on a small plane from the desert to the coast in Casablanca. Go back through customs again after we landed, and now we are driving back to the southern part of the country. Obviously, there is a reason for this madness, and Dad must have had a sneaky suspicion about the roads leading from Warzazet to our next destination. See, if we would have driven the full length to Warzazet, we would not be able to arrive at our next stop due to mudslides from the rainfall that was whipping through the area. And this is not a place you want to leave off of your trip. Get ready to experience the city of Marrakesh. <laughs> We just got orange juice squeezed, freshly squeezed. Very good. Mint tea is a staple in Morocco, and I'm going to teach you how to make it the way Dad taught me. Like with cooking, sourcing your ingredients is one of the most important steps. Make sure you buy the freshest mint leaves you can get your hands on. After sourcing your mint, you want to soak it in cold water for some time to remove any dirt and insects. Following the soaking, we are going to lay out the mint to dry. Getting the kettle set up is pretty straightforward. Fill it up to the desired amount of tea you intend on making. Now normally you would light to the stove and that's that for the kettle portion of the steps. But since I am the videographer that I am, I want to do this multiple times so I can pick which one I like the most in post. Now that I have a clip that I can live with, we're going to crank up that stove to get our water to a boil. While we are waiting on the kettle, we can go ahead and pick the mints that we want to use for our tea. Yes, I am smelling each individual stem of mint. You will be very surprised by the difference one stem can make on a single pot of tea. 
and they take their tea seriously here. Another thing to note is that Moroccan mint tea also includes traditional tea leaves, like black tea or green tea. Personally, I'm choosing to skip the caffeine and go mint only. Do not worry about the stems. We are putting it in leaves and all. Just make sure the lid on the pot can close completely. Now let's check on our kettle, and the water has come to a boil. We are going to let the mint steep for about 15 minutes or so. Now we are going to practice pouring the tea into one of the glasses. This helps to cool the drink, and it draws out more oils and flavors from the mint. Make sure to repeat this step several times. After one final pour, we end up with a drink that could rival any tea. It is day eight of our time in Morocco, and we are gathering with family once more for lunch and dinner. We go wash our hands. You want? Yeah. <laughs> My mom said uh, you learned Arabic very quickly. <laughs> because He's been studying. Every night. Every night he goes, he goes, and I'm in America. You can put some mayo in your, in your dish. This is rice and tuna. <laughs> and corn. The only olive oil. She doesn't make any butter or something. Do any of you speak Amazir? No? Quickly? Slow? A little bit. How do you say hello in Amazir? Uh, he I don't know. Uh, Ask my mom. <laughs> <laughs> she is pure Amazon. They're originally from there, but they didn't grow up there. Uh, well, well, growing up, the, my grandma didn't teach them. Yeah, they didn't teach them. She didn't want to teach you? Hey. They think they were, may not need it. Mm. How do you find Arabic? Moroccan. So like, I study it as if it's yeah. like English. So I don't look at it like in Arabic writing. I look at it. I look at it as if how you think it would be. How do you say that? Like, isn't there two ways to read Arabic? Hmm. What is the way that looks like English? No, he read this like in Latin. Latin. Use Latin uh, words. words. Yeah. What? Latin uh, materials. Second speed. Al-Huruf Latinia. Letters. What do you have? I don't know how you can speak it. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's almost drawn. The favorite sound. This is almost gone. How do you say that? 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 Uh, how do you say that? Uh, <laughs> well, this is difficult. Let's 
I made myself like a sandwich. This is so, so good. Mm. I had mm. this. Dessert time. Oh, this looks really good. Cantaloupe and watermelon. That's great. Now, before you start to say, that's honeydew, no, it's not. In North America, we have the usual orange cantaloupe. But here in Morocco, at least, they have the green cantaloupe. Now, remember when we bought those Moroccan pastries in Marrakesh? Well, some of them are mixed in on this plate, and they sure are tasty. After lunch, most of us headed for the beach, while the rest stayed back to start cooking up dinner. Something interesting my cousin showed me was that the black rocks you see aren't actually black. They are covered in black shells. All right, you see this one? It's like minty. You should put it. Uh, what we are about to ride today is what I am most excited for on this trip. We are at the Rabat Agadal train station. Before I tell you what type of train we are riding on, I'm going to let you guess which one it is. If you guessed the 750 to Tangier, then you are correct except for we weren't able to make the 750 and we took the 850 instead. This train goes by a few names amongst the rail fan community. Some call it the Moroccan TGV, while most in Morocco call it the Al Barak. On the other hand, rail fans around the world, myself included, prefer to call it the fastest train in Africa. The Al Barak runs from Casablanca to Tangier. Fortunately for us today, we are riding on the Rabat to Tangier segment, which does not have any speed restrictions so we can experience that 199 mile per hour record breaking speed. Yeah, we're in 
second class, so we didn't get first class tickets, but um, one of the things when you come on here is like, you need to make sure you're very quiet, like, that's why I'm using my mic. So you need to make sure you're very quiet. Um, okay. I am wearing a mask, so uh, just to be safe, but yeah, we are uh, on our way to Tangier. We, we left from the robot station, so. Now you are probably wondering, Jacob, where is the 199 miles an hour record-breaking speed? Subway trains go faster than this. Well, on this particular section of track, there is an extremely tight curve that is just up ahead from us. But once we pass the nearby city of Kanitra, we will be picking up some serious speed. Unfortunately, the fastest train in Africa does not include a dining service. And depending on where you board along the route, you might not even be able to get a hot meal. During our trip, they only had bottled drinks and snacks on display on the counter. With that minor disappointment out of the way, let us sit in our comfy seats and listen to some music as we speed across the line.
We are in the beautiful city of Tangier, Morocco. It's the sun is beating down on me, so if I'm I'm squinting badly. But yeah, uh, we're probably going to get some lunch or brunch, as we call it in America. And we will only be spending one night in Tangier, as we will be driving southeast to the blue city of Shishawan. But in order to do so, we'll be picking up our rental car. It's an automatic. Oh no, it's not. Automatic. Oh, this it is, is automatic. automatic. It is automatic. Okay. Then how to drive this one, man? Let's think about this for a minute. We are about to drive over 60 miles through the Rift Mountains, and Dad does not know how to drive an automatic. That could be a problem. All right. This is park. Yeah. Uh, this is reverse. reverse. Uh, this is neutral. Mm. And then this is drive. Oh, yeah. So and put it and how will drive. you pull it? Okay, so the plan is to catch the sunset at Cap Spartel, which is a tall cliff that provides an amazing sunset view. And for some reason, we thought that this would be the best learning opportunity for Dad. Mom wasn't feeling so good, so she decided to stay back at the hotel. And just like that, everything comes to a grinding halt. Unfortunately, mom came down with COVID, so we are back home in Rabat. Dad and I are out getting oranges to make orange juice for mom. As dad touches all the oranges, let's talk about the perks of sourcing fresh ingredients. If you want to try true Moroccan food, you have to taste it here for yourself. I say that because in order to make true Moroccan food, you need true Moroccan ingredients. Produce like oranges and olives are cultivated in multiple regions across the country. 
If we look at the tagines we already ate, everything can be sourced locally, from the fruits and vegetables, various grains including rice and couscous, to the preserved lemons which can be found in the local food markets. As far as olives are concerned, olive trees are about as numerous here as pine trees in the state of South Carolina. It is hard to find fresh olives in the U.S. simply because the agricultural industry is nowhere near as developed as it is in Morocco. So if we go back to the tagines again, when you order yours with olives, there is no comparison. Can, uh, to get there the, are uh, olives, oh. like this one right here, and they're not even that salty. They're not that salty. They're actually really good. We spend another day in Saleh as mother recovers from COVID at the house. Dad and I decided to visit the beach in Rabat. As we rest here enjoying the nice waves, we finally have the opportunity to sit and talk about life. What it was like for mom as a single parent. After a couple days of rest, mom is feeling much better and we are on our way to Sheaf Shalin. This will be the final leg of our time in Morocco, other than the drive back to the airport in Casablanca. There is a, from this place we can go through and through was the And Dad's car just casually stalls in a non-concerning area.
Just in case you are wondering if we are on the right track, notice that some of the buildings we are passing are painted blue. We are almost at Chef Shallon with Locos. Thir this is a river. Locos River. Interestingly, the newer section of the city farther down the mountain is painted in different colors like red and beige. The older section of the city higher up on the mountain is painted in the famous blues, and that is where we will be staying the next couple of nights. Before heading off for a late lunch, can we just take in the views from above the courtyard during golden hour? We decided to eat something light at the Parador Hotel and Restaurant. I didn't get tea in it. I just got um, the mint with the water and no sugar. Cause that, that's how I like it. That's how I like it the most. So I can add my own sugar. But this doesn't have any sugar in it. So. I'm just watching the sunset on this beautiful mountain. I ordered a, I ordered a harissa. Harissa? Harida. 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 I ordered harida, Moroccan soup. which is a Moroccan soup, so I hope it will soothe my throat. We almost ate all the dates, there's two left, and the vegetable soup is very good. The sun is setting on this beautiful Friday afternoon. This is so American to do this, but... It... You put a little bit, let me know. Mmm. Mmm. It's very good. Yes, I am. Give me a... Uh, yeah. With lunch finished and the sun going down, it is time to take a walk around the streets of the old city.
showed them. I'm gonna try the um, one of the olive one of the here. cookies that we got from the that shop. Made it to. We've seen two places he made it to. It's kind of like a shortbread. It's kind of shortbready. Is it? Yes, but that one with chocolate was very good. I'd say it was really nice. Try the Bouncing is off today. Walking in the streets, walking in the streets, Chef Sean. Wow, this is a nice spot. It is so cool in here, like the cool temperature. Getting lost is part of the fun. Wow, oh, you can see like you can see like just like how thick the like the different layers. Like you can see the, by the texture of the wall, like just how much uh, layers of paint have been applied to this wall. Ready? <laughs> 
these are the rugs. So um, these rugs are made in the high, higher up in the mountains near Chef Shaolin, and they're brought down and they're sold. I believe by the native Berbers. Salam. 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 Berbers. Berbers. Yes, okay. Berbers. Where do they make this? Mother. Let's actually see all of the carpets and rugs that this gentleman made. He even keeps the loom inside the shop. One thing to mention is that so far, as far as value for price is concerned, the things we have bought were for a very good deal. Here is where it gets a little bit more pricey. These rugs and other woven fabrics can easily run you a few hundred US dollars, but they have a reason for being that expensive. The materials are all natural, consisting of sheep's wool and dyes. Where are you from? Uh, America. Welcome. Today uh -huh. is day of market. Day of market. Sit. What's your name? A Jacob. Jacob. Oh, I have some friend here named Jacob, like you. Oh. Now we we'll give you a Moroccan name. <laughs> Marhaba, madam. Uh, You're welcome. Okay. Look, my friend. This is a scarps. Oh, it's Now right. you look like Abdul. <laughs> <laughs> look at. Mother, get dad. Get dad. If you are in the deserts, you discover from sand and windy like oh, okay. this in the Sahara. But in the Medina, just like this, normal. Yep, this is quite <coughs> the interesting look. Oh, look at this sun. It's here. The people from the desert, the blue people, we call them the blue people because they are wearing this blue all the yeah. time. We call them the blue people. No, because in Morocco, there is three kinds of Berber people. Berber from a high atlas, they call them shluh. And Berber from South Sahara Desert, we call them Tuareg. And Berber from North, we call them Reef. You are now in the Reef Mountain. Reef, yeah. Reef. It's not a high Atlas Mountain, it's a Reef. Reef, reef. Yeah. Remember, you yeah. told me no. It... Okay. Uh, if you like, I give you a small demonstration about carpet. No, no. No, no. Marhaba. Yeah? Yeah. Shikran. Here, no push like Bush and no drama like Obama. <laughs> we, we keep smile. <laughs> like, if people live here, man, it's like. Wow, it's so beautiful. You go up there. Mark. It's like once you think you've you found something, you turn to your left and there's like a new alleyway. Wow. It smells like there's there's a restaurant back there, it smells like. Wow. See the, I don't know if you can see the grapes, but yeah, the grapes. Grapes are beautiful. The grape barns. 
السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام See all these great, see all these yeah, beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Uh. Oh, look at these little kittens. Mom, you have to take a picture. You have to take a picture. Mom, come here. You have to take a picture of these kittens. Oh, wow. Like, and one thing I notice is like every every little place that like I'm going to and I'm walking to, they have their own way of they have their own way of painting blue. Like it's blue, it's different shades of blue, but it's also different patterns, um, different textures of blue. Um, mostly from like the surface, like that they're painting on. But like this is like a this is a nice like form of art. When you think about it, you don't you might not think that it is art, but it is. It's like their house is their muse, their courtyards are their muse. And they incorporate the plants and the doors. They don't and they don't leave anything really to chance. They plant the street they paint the streets blue, the pathways blue. With all of these beautiful spots in mind, let's see some of the photos we got. Wow, look at all these. I don't know if you can see them, but look at all the grapes. grapes yeah. These are large grapes. These grapes are... Wow. Those aren't small grapes. Look at that. We are back at the Pirador Hotel and Restaurants for something light. But more importantly, there is one more item on the Sheaf Shawn bucket list. And it lies on top of this hill. And yes, we are going to hike it. We did it, finally here.
Tekken King Ted. How is the battery? Patriotism. Patriotism? Patriot. Patriot. God, Patriot and the King. Independence Day is tomorrow. Those olive trees, right? And figs. Figs, figs and olives. on the top? Yep. Yeah, this one. These are Moroccans living in France. They are coming now for the vacation. Living in France and uh, Germany and they are coming home now. From Tangier because the, the port of Tangier. So they're coming they cross, to visit they cross, family? Yeah, they cross France and Spain and they go to Tangier then they go they take the ferry? They take the ferry with their cars. We are in the city of Tetsuko. Yeah. This is a big city. Yeah, this one is a very known city. Most of people come here by the beach. Fest, making ends, Rabat, we go there. Do you want to have lunch in Tangier? Yes. Huh. Ah. So. Check it. For a rather odd reason, we did not fill up on gas before leaving Tangier. Abuse some. No, if there is no gas, I call somebody to bring for us We are going. Did you? You filled up though, right? If we fill up too much, the car is going to be too heavy. So. Maybe it will take us to, to Rabat. If not, I will, I will be very close to Rabat. What then the I call somebody what the <laughs> to hell? bring for me the fuel. What is your problem? What, what that is the dumbest what, thing I've ever heard. What's wrong with you? That because we are too much, too many that works in this for small a car. Plane. This, this listen, is a listen, small listen. car. That may work small for a plane. And very old car. Not a car like this. That is the dumbest thing I've ever and heard. And still with planes, they fill up enough gasoline in them to get there to their destination. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> here we just put, put enough fuel enough in this plane to make so enough fuel to, to, go, to take us to, because it's expensive first. Second, if we fill it up to more, we will spend more fuel. I know, but, saving. but you said we might have enough fuel to give to a robot. If an mm. airplane, yeah, let's make... Let's fill up this plane so we might be able to get to our destination. <laughs> <laughs> we might. We might. Welcome, guys. Welcome. You're flying from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina to London Heathrow. 
refilled up enough uh, <laughs> so we might be able to get to our destination. But if we're not, we can call someone hey, for a fuel. <laughs> like, <laughs> two more miles to go. Yeah. Just to a few liters, please. Can you help me out, please? Say, well, just stay right give there. us enough. Just, just give us a, enough to, so to bring us to, to, to our house. <laughs> to get to the gas station. Safely. <laughs> safely. <laughs> just give me enough gas or I might be able to the Eventually, we made it back to Rabat. Fortunately, we did not run out of gasoline. After a day of resting, on our last full day in the country, we decided to check out the Medina in Rabat. I am so glad you joined us in discovering Morocco. Just looking back at the photos alone, it was so memorable. We got to ride the fastest train in Africa, visit a film studio, see the blue city of Chief Shawin, and so much more. After all the amazing things we did, the most memorable moments were the ones spent with family. Now obviously we are separated by an ocean, so we can't see each other often. At times, it is hard to even have a conversation without translating. Here is the biggest kicker. Mom and I are Christians, and my dad and his family are Muslims. There will always be that divide between us. Even after all of that, they still invited us into their homes with open arms, simply because we are all family. Always American and forever Moroccan.